Hey guys, guys and gals, whatever, people, humans, non-humans, hello, it's Sunday the 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo, cheers. Mm. That's what you get, you know, when you play bass and you haven't played bass on gigs for a while. And then, you you know, I was practicing, but practice is not the same as a gig. And um, I happen to know the secret. I think that's, I don't think that is why I have the reputation here locally, you know, and why I'm in the Hall of Fame for my bass playing is because I understand the difference between just playing the bass and driving the band along with... It, it, the rhythm section is the engine, drums and bass. You know, it was um, the last half of the set on Friday night was very painful for me. On one... Tr you know, the only clip that I've found so far from the show is from the track, the song that we played that to me is the weakest. And I resorted to playing a pick on it because I, it was, I was in so much pain, but it wasn't working. So before that song was over, I abandoned the pick and went back to the pain because there it was. Yeah, okay, now we're back. We're rumbling forward. So, I will carefully try to, um, like, you know, right now, it's very painful. So, the only thing I can do to kind of help them, you know, is to kind of, like, tap on a, on a surface, you know. Because, um, um, it's, it's the thing, you, you know, you build up your calluses. In the King Crimson, um, um, documentary... It, it was cool where Tony Levin showed how on the one hand, his little finger is, is as he called like a spatulated because it's, he's used it so much. It's flat. So your hands, your body adopts, adapts to your, uh, your art. Okay. Just thought I'd stop in. <laughs> what else is on my mind? Well, folks, it looks like maybe there's less in, interest in the second conversation with David Hawes of Catherine Wheel. I'd encourage you to watch it. I think it's too bad that such a, um, an amazing band, even though it was 30 years ago, are all but forgotten by the mainstream. Catherine Wheel has its fan base. I'm one of them. I love that music. And I really appreciate um, the connection with David because he's just a just another person, just really down to earth. But what he did in that band has really touched my life and a lot of other people. So I really enjoyed his our visit yesterday uh, again, and I encourage you to, to to watch it. And if you don't know their music, give them a chance. I'm going to free flow this morning because I, um, because I am. So the, one of the last things I got from, um, Discus Music that I finally absorbed because, you know, I'll give you my first impressions and then this came a while back. Shiver Meets Matthew Bourne Volume 2. I would compare the, I, I think I, I said something about this, but I'm going to say it again. Wow, this is really good. Like super silent. Really nice. Really nice. Okay. Um, so, I'll be honest. I, uh, I had to do something yesterday where I had to leave. Oh, I had a, I had a, a, a visit. Not even a session, but a visit with Hank Red. 
and um, I'm going to book him. I didn't book him yet, but I'm going to have him over to lay down some saxophone or guitar because he's excited by what he heard Aaron and I do at my DHX show. I said, whoa, you want to jump on these tracks? You want to jump on now? I'm not asking you. You're asking me. Wow, that's a nice flip. We had a nice laugh about it. But after um, helping him with his um, computer, because I guess, not guess, I'm his personal assistant. You know, I work for uh, for Hank. When he asks for some help, I, I consider a friend, but he always pays me, and I appreciate the pay. But that was wonderful that he was vibing me up saying, ooh, you don't you know what I can do on that guitar on that track. So um about to set it up. Might even do it tomorrow. Um, I love talking to him. He, like I said, he's 10 years older than me. And unfortunately, the health is going. So when I saw him yesterday, you know, he said, the reason why I ain't been calling you because I'm, I just, I've been physical therapy, doctors. I'm just about to go back to work again. See, in his mind, he has to work, but he doesn't. He doesn't have to work. And he's, he's old school like my brother, Pat. My, my younger brother, Pat. No matter how much money he didn't have, whatever he had, he would keep it in a, in a wad in his pocket. And I grew up with cats like this. And, you know, that's why they call you players. You know, real players, if they had a wad and they st stuck it on the table or they flashed it, a real player would have hundreds. Um, you know, fakes would have wads of ones. You know, I know that's the deal because I've my brother's an example where he's had times where he had the money, and other times he would just wad up all those ones. It still looked good. Freaking Hank paying me with his old wad. It's. <laughs> He doesn't have to work. He wants to work. So we had a conversation. You folks, okay, I, I need to stop doing this. You know, it's part of my um, idiosyncrasy where I'm, I get concerned that, um, and I shouldn't be, I just, just, I should just, just keep moving ahead and being myself. So um, I picked his brain. I helped him, actually I helped him with his ASCAP account. And as a result, was able to talk about some things um, uh, financially and business-wise, which um, I won't all share here, but it was very enlightening, you know. He's with ASCAP, I'm with BMI. I have my own publishing, and I was able to ask some deep questions about publishing, and he knew the answers. I was happy to know that I'm on the right track with how I'm doing my publishing, and and I'm glad at this point that I'm just publishing myself. I've actually been approached twice now by local artists asking if I would publish them, and I'm, I said no. I don't want to. I don't want to um, administer your music. Pure and simple. It's not why I got into publishing to make money. I got into it to legally own my my music. It's nice that as a result that I am making a little bit of money, but no, I don't want to publish other artists. I'll show some records, but one more. Because I, I feel very thankful for my life. And I'm really enjoying every day as much as possible. So, um, I asked Hank to tell me about some more of his adventures. I was recently watching... Um, a clip of Stevie with Angela Winbush in the background singers. I had a thing for for a little while when I was younger, and I asked him, so so you work with Ang Angela Winbush? And he sure did. And um, he got a kick out of me saying, well, boy, I sure did have a thing for her for a while. And he said, man, that, that woman can write. Not only can she sing, she can write. That's just so neat to talk to the artists, and you hear more about the real story. So
So, what did I what did I buy? I went to I didn't go to Homer's. I went to Grapefruit and visited with Simon for a while. I really like Simon, folks. If you don't know who Simon Joyner is, oh, that's another one. Reminds me. Do you guys know who Jake Bellows is? You ought to. Um, he had a band called Neva De Nova. They're actually they have actually finished a new album. Uh, I found out he came to the show. I was so honored. I did South by Southwest as part of a Saddle Creek um, uh, showcase with Sun Ambulance and Neva De Nova. And um, Jake is pretty damned cool. There are some people who are real that really stand out as good people, but also real artists. And he's an example. It's good to see him. I was reminded because I shared that with Simon, you know. I'm glad to know that circle of people. There's, there's, you know. So anyway, I had a good visit with Simon, and I picked up the just-released um, broadcast. I like broadcast quite a bit, haven't you? There you go. You saw me take the plastic off. Trish, who passed away at a young age, unfortunately. I like this music because it sounds like it's coming from the twilight world. It sounds like it's coming from um, the future past. That's what they sound like. It sounds like the future from a past reference. And what we have here is Collected Demos, 2006, 2009. So, in essence, what we have here is the label and the management scraping the barrel, releasing everything, you know, posthumously. This is what happens when you die. And people think they can make money off of you. And I'm telling the truth, even though there's love for this music, these people are making money off of this. Because as I listen to this, these are my tapes. I have my tapes of this, my beginnings. Because this is early, early, 2006, 2009. They're just getting to go. And, and um, you can hear where the ideas are developing, but you can also hear where Trish um, didn't sing very well at first. Got to a point where as I was listening to this where it's like... Um, I'm starting to get annoyed by that voice because she hasn't honed it yet. But the ideas are already there. So I'm glad I got this spell blanket. I like broadcasts quite a bit. I picked up a couple of theirs because uh, I, I collect them and I really do like their music. Got another Midori T Takata album. The Japanese percussionist. Cutting branch branches for a temporary shelter, Midori Takada, a classically trained percussionist who, um, this is way cool because it, I took the time yesterday to read, we get all this information with these reissues and, you know, I, I, I am certain that there's a lot of folks who never even read the stuff. So I took a time to read this, because that's what I thought to myself. All this information, let me find out. So she made this album with these ancient instruments that were borrowed from a, from a, a couple museums around the world. And this is really special. This woman is so sensitive. You can hear where she is not expressing herself, but interacting with the instrument to release its sound and character there's a point where she does this thing with these hand symbols and it's like you almost it's like i'm taken back to a time that i don't even remember but i can hear it's like oh yeah that's how they use these ceremony these symbols ceremoniously like um something probably related to um buddhism you know wonderful music wonderful music i picked up um Everything I picked up, um, I haven't listened to deeply, but again, that's one of the fun things about the record collection. I can go through my, my um, I can browse my own collection endlessly and find new things to discover, but it's so much fun to buy records. It is, isn't it? So I got this other recent issue 
I think this is a recent reissue, uh, not reissue, but a recent issue by broadcast. Work and non-work. And this came out before the one I showed. And you can tell they're working their way down as far as quality. Okay. So this is, is not as rough and raw as the one I just showed. Some of this stuff, um, could have been released, but you can tell this is them working on ideas. Broadcast. If you don't know them, check them out. The other broadcast album I got, I've been been after this one for a while. They reissued it. Ha Ha Sound. This is where it comes together, okay? By the time they become broadcast, and they're, I mean, really, in releasing records, this is real cool, and it fits the cover. Isn't that a great graphic ha ha sound you know what it suggests comes through on the record i like broadcast no they're not like stereo lab it's it's the female lead i think that makes some people compare them i'll keep going because the used section at Grapefruit is to die for all the time, as opposed to Homer's, who sweetens theirs for Record Store Day, which frustrates the shit out of me, because I know that they're sitting on some gold nuggets in their warehouse. You know, let me add that stuff. Let me have it. Part of the conversation I had with Simon, you know, Simon is a record collector and a music lover. And he said how, you know, he's conscious of that. Like when he tours, he buys records mainly for himself, um, but also for the store. But when stuff comes in, used to choose through to buy for the store, he always defers to the store unless it's something he really wants. Because I bought a couple things. We said, oh, I didn't get to that yet. I wasn't going to listen to that. <laughs> I just said, say, so you and I are cut from the same cloth. You know, I really love Simon Joyner. This is one where he had had a chance to listen to it. And his he, when he saw me buy it, he, he said, like, yeah, you, yeah, Higgins knows. Ragnar Grip Sand. Uh, I forget where he's from. Electronic composer. He's been at this for a while. This is, oh my goodness. This is badass, okay? This is like that early, early stuff like with Steve Reich and people who do stuff with loops and stuff. Um, this is stuff that goes back to the 70s, but it sounds now, doesn't sound old at all. Clear vinyl. There's a couple different versions of this. This is a reissue. This is wonderful. It just cascades and um and percolates and shifts. Sand by Ragnar Grip. If you don't if you've never heard of this album, this was a score. This is my shit. So I went ahead and bought this reissue because I don't want to pay hundreds, even a thousand for these spiritual jazz albums that sold like shit when they first came out. And now they're collector's grails to, to, to I, I, you know, I've said it before, but I think that some people collect records and don't listen to them. They're like uh, talismans or so. I don't know. That's the, that's the wrong word. Because I've seen in groups where people are, are snooty about their collecting and they'll show stuff like this originals. It's like, you don't care about the music, do you, really? Phil Ranolin, the time is now. You know, for a time I wasn't interested in picking these records up because I was interested in collecting other stuff. But this is some vital music. Okay, let's get that straight. If we're just gonna talk about whether or not the music's any good, this shit is fantastic. I also love how they give the backstory about the emergence of black consciousness out of um, civil rights movement and how that birthed a lot of this music and a lot of this activity. 
we locally had a band like this called the Orchestra. My brother was in it. I wasn't good enough musically to play in the band. My skills were not up for it. I, I openly admit it. I even admit that I was once playing with members of that that ended up in that band, and they kicked me off. The, the, they said, get off the drums. You can't play. And they were right. I wasn't ready. I was not, <laughs> I wasn't keeping time. I was trying to play me. And it's like, that was a real learning experience. So I have my own personal experience with this whole black consciousness, black music thing. It's a part of my history. This is really good from the top. Okay. Just really, really strong stuff. Are you watching today, Sec? You, do you have originals of, of this stuff? I bet you do. That was a great score out of the news section. This was in the news section, and I'm glad that... Oh, I could have just pulled it to show. I'm not going to dig for it. I noticed this, um, and then Simon was walking past it. Oh, that's real good. A bad Diana. The lights are on, but no one's home. This is Diana Rogerson. Rogerson, Rogerson, however you say her name. She put out an al album through um, the label that Nurse with Wounds, Stephen Stapleton, had for a while. The Crystal Bell Scrod. I have it. I have an original. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult listen, but it's really creative. This is like, what? This is killer. Richard, third, fourth, fourth dimension. You dig this stuff. You put out stuff like this. This is like, wow. This is like really, really well realized. And it's like, they do things. That's the thing that intri has always intrigued me about Nurse with Wound and people like that who work with sound. It's like, well, how are they getting that sound? Because I like to identify things. And they do things on here that it takes me a minute. What? How are they getting that sound? But beyond that, the entire atmosphere of certain pieces here, it's like, this is deep. This is really good. A Bad Diana. I highly recommend this for you deep listeners. That's real good. This has been talked about a lot over the years by jazzers. And for good reason. This is a good album. I finally got it. A reissue of it. Cat. By Hiroshi Suzuki, trombonist. Um, this is one of those real collectible jazz albums from Japan. But for good reason. This is a real, real solid, really good session. With, a, with Akira Aki Ishikawa on drums. He's a cat. He's a Japanese cat as far as drumming. Because this is his band that did Uganda. Um, Count Buffaloes. The guy is killer on the drums. But he doesn't play like a Westerner or an or or, or, or an, a European. The way that he does his accents, the way that he responds to the jazz, you can hear that he's learned from that school. But he's doing his thing. This is this is real good. Glad to finally get it. I'm gonna I'm gonna wind down here because it's um over twenty minutes. And then finally, I got this. I have the other La Dusseldorf albums. I finally got this one. La Dusseldorf. And it's it's an original. Not a reissue. This is kind of goofy music. You know, it's kind of... There's a real playful aspect to this. But it's the it's the, it's the Noi Motorik drum thing. That's the, he's, the, he's the guy that basically invented it, you know. I enjoyed this. Oh, shit. Yeah, see, there were some amazing records. The last three. I got some dope shit yesterday. Annette Peacock and Paul Blay. Dual Unity. This is a reissue. This is their, their early synthesizer um, forays. And this is not messing around. This is... They... she In reading the notes, she got her synthesizer from Bob Moog himself. As well as Paul Blay. So there's some of the early explorers, and this is this is this crackles, and um, 
the last two things that I'll show, this is the one that Simon was, oh, I didn't even get a chance. Lol Coxhill, Welfare State. I haven't played this yet. Um, this is almost like, kind of like a, a um, these are events where he was involved. Um, and uh, I didn't read this yet, This, but he, um, important musician. And um, I gather that besides music, he was an activist for human rights. And that's um, what this is about. And the last thing I got, which was the first thing I played, a Love Supreme Live in Seattle, John Coltrane. Yeah. I scored big time yesterday at um, Grapefruit, on, as well as having a wonderful visit with Simon. Okay, folks. Watch Dave Hawes. Even if you're not a Catherine Wheel fan, it's a good conversation. He's a good person. Yeah, he had on another good t-shirt. Family out in California, hope you're okay. People all around the, the, the world that are watching, I hope you're okay. Inclement weather is happening, folks. You know, it's not like it was even 10 years ago. Um, the flooding and the, the heat going on. Take care of people.